Hi everyone, I hope you're ready. Uh, this is the 8th of January. We are starting our second week of Color A Weirdy Day. So we made it through the first week, uh, which is pretty awesome. So we already got the seven first weirdies colored. We're well on the way. And there's lovely, lovely uh, color that I've seen. And today I sat down and I put them all together in a video to have a recap of the first week of Color Weirdy Day. I thought it could be fun for all of us to sort of like see the results. I decided though that the first video, I wanted to make it fast and under 10 minutes, but I think that the speed videos had gotten really too speedy because the normal speed video I do is like um, 60 times the speed. So that you see two hours and 50 minutes and two hours and 50, in, in two minutes and 50 seconds. But then I had speed them up four times. So I think it went too fast. So I made a second version where those speed videos are only like double of the 60. So it's 120 times. It's still very fast. But I need, you know, to keep it uh, short and, you know, so that you can view the whole week in less than 15 minutes. And I think that that's pretty cool. Hi, Tina. Hi, Manuela. Nice to see you guys. Uh, and I'm going to be coloring this bad boy today. I'm just going to look at him a little bit from the other side as well because I might want to try to do that because the first time I colored him the other way and I sort of the first time I saw him as a Spanish uh, um, bull so this time I want to see him a bit differently so you know uh, now I see sort of like a lion face down here and I see another face here with eyes up there so you know I'm seeing different things now and I actually took out my uh, Faber-Castell ones, these ones. They're pretty dusty. It's an old set. Uh, I've had it for quite a few years. So I don't know if there's some of them that are dry. These are the big brush. You see these are fat, biggy ones. And they are called, oh, let me just, you know, just, uh, they're called uh, Faber-Castell Pit Artist Pen Big Brush. And this is a set of 48. I think there only is 48 colors. But it's a pretty one. And I think I'm going to color with them in case some of them are totally dead, uh, which there might be because I have colored quite a lot with them. Uh, I'm just going to pull it out here. Uh, then I have a backup plan with the, uh, the Pit Artist uh, brush that is not the big brush. So I can replace if there's a color that's missing. So we're going to be playing with these bad boys. And I think I want to take the full range uh, in the order that they put it. And then we're just going to see how that's going to work here. I don't know if 48 colors might be too much. Maybe, you know, we'll take out some of the grays or something like that. You know, we will see how far we work it. Or maybe I'll switch it up and, you know, just take brown and grays out and just switch when I get to that uh, bright green. That would mean 36 colors in total. So we're just gonna go ahead and dig in there. My arm is feeling, uh, it's still sore, but it's, it's, it's feeling a little bit better. Hi, Danny, nice to see you. So yeah, we're just uh, gonna dig in there and um, I hope some of you guys will share. Hopefully, uh, if somebody could share to Adult Coloring Worldwide or to Coloring Books for Adult, that would be really awesome. Since yeah, I'm still on Facebook jail, so I cannot do nothing. Sucks big time, but it's life. We roll with the punches. So I'm just gonna, you know, I think I'm gonna go up here. This one is called Ivory, and I actually like it. It's a very light, but it's sort of a nice color. And then I'm that one is gonna continue there. So that's enough for there. And then I'm just gonna go in here and go in here. So, you know, I'm going to start in the middle like I usually do. You see me do that a lot. And these are very good. They're very uh, nice. I can show you the brush. It's just like this. Uh, it's, it's a sturdy brush. It's not so soft as, for instance, the style file brushes that I was using yesterday. They're way softer. Um, so I actually like uh, this brush for being a little bit more... Um, hard 
I think the, the, that helps me. Uh, and this one will develop from there. And then I have this here. I will see that will develop from there. And then we're just going to have this finishing touch down here. So that is our starting point with our ivory colored. Hi, Roz. Awesome to see you. And remember, check out that video. It's really awesome. I mean, because you see my first colored gifts and you see this really, really speedy, speedy version of the live video and all the awesome color that uh, you guys made with your names on it. So it's a fun recap of the first week and what we did together. So it's a uh, uh, there's a couple of links. The newest one is uh, the one that takes a little bit over 13 minutes. Is the newest one where you can, it's more relaxed, you know, less stressy. I think. I didn't could there, I could only choose from one song, so I did not have a lot, lot of music choice on it. But uh, you'll have to, you'll have to live with that. You can always turn down the sound and listen to something else. So this one was the next one in this set, and it is. Um, Let's just see what the color is called. This is called Cream. And yeah, these are the Faber-Castell Artist Pit, Artist Pen, Big Brush. So um, yeah, I'll just show you next to the other set that they have. There's a Marcus, like if you see, I have them here. So I'm just going to try to see if I can get the same color out. Uh, this is light yellow glaze. So. You can see that's a big difference in the size of these. And if you open it up, you can see the tips. They're both brushes, but there's a huge difference in the size. So yeah, that's uh, two marker sets from uh, Faber-Castell. And they're pretty neat, both of them. And they do have that, they're not as clear in the same way as, uh, they're a little bit more muted in the colors and you know that's the style of the uh, Faber Castell of their markers so um, that's what we're working with but it always produces very lovely results these colors are always very beautiful very uh, very nice uh, quality as well so yeah I, I enjoy those and I thought these are fun to bring out because they're these little fat ones um, so we're going to go for the next yellow. There are four yellows. This one is called Light Yellow Glaze. That was actually the one I showed you in the smaller version. So uh, they're nice to hold on to because they've got that fatty grip. This one actually seems a little bit like it's got some green in it, in the tip. You see? It seems greenish. Funny. Because the tip of the, the little one didn't seem greenish at all. So that's an interesting thing. It's something to give thought to if it is the correct one that's in there. You know, you never know if there was a mistake. Maybe there was a mistake and I can complain and get a new set. Wouldn't that be wonderful? And I'd have to use the set a little bit more before I complain it. Eh? So yeah, this is, is nice. It has, though, I find it a little bit, now we'll, we'll see how we're working, how it uh, continues and develops, because sometimes I find that it wets the page quite a lot, so you probably need some, a little bit heavier paper, because this is just regular copy paper that I'm using. And why? Well, because I didn't have any good paper, and because when you're with markers, it's okay with this, and it doesn't eat as much of the ink. And I don't want the paper to eat my ink you know I'm kind of you know I don't want to spend more ink than absolutely necessary I want to keep my markers as long as possible and be able to color as much as possible with them so I'm not a, a big fan of paper that will eat the ink because some paper will eat the ink right up and that is no fun So yeah, that was that one. And we're going to go straight on to the next one here. This one is uh, called Cadium Yellow. So let's hope that that's a warm yellow we're getting here. 
Yes, it is a warm, sunshiny yellow, beautiful yellow. So that's actually four yellows, and then we're going into a very dark yellow that will be in between the orange. Um, so this is nice. We're gonna get. Um, we're gonna get to see. Maybe not the browns and the grays because you know. I also have to think about the size of how much space there is. So I will see how far we get and what's left when I get close to there, if we're going to get into the browns as well. Um, I do want to try to keep a bit of my, uh, my rainbow theme. Hi, Sandra. Uh, and why do I want to keep that? that? Well, that's because I've actually uploaded um, the colored. I finally scanned them. And I got uploaded them to my red bubble shop where I put them on products. And I like to sort of keep my theme there of uh, my style of coloring, the colors that I use. So um, that's kind of one of the th things. But, you know, that doesn't mean that anything is set in stone. I might move away from that. Uh, it sort of depends, yeah, on the moment and how I feel in the moment. Uh, so this is developing getting those yellows in there hopefully it will be pretty as the other ones were pretty it was so nice to see the scans and all the scans turned out really great and yeah as you heard i put them on products on my pay hip now on my red bubble red bubble um you can get stickers and t-shirts and everything there uh, uh so that they, i just think it looks funny to see them on the on the actual products, you know, this is a, it's a great enjoyment for me. So yeah, I put them there, and uh, I'll be trying to update that. Uh, hi, Julie, awesome to see you. So yeah, uh, I'll be updating that, you know, on a regular basis. I don't know if I'll be updating every day or once a week. It will sort of really depend on when I have time. Um. Um, please feel free to share the video because um, I can't share it. That's why I'm straight into coloring because I cannot share because of this stupid Facebook uh, deal that I'm in again. Again, this is very close to orange. This is a nice color. I, I like that color. It's a very pretty color. Uh, so I can't share and, you know, if everybody could share one or two places, you know, not too fast, like, you know, share one place and wait three, four minutes and share another place or, or even five minutes. Um, then, you know, it will spread like wildfire. And uh, maybe more people will join us in coloring a weirdier day and we can have even more weirdy fun and see more beautiful colored, uh, colored uh, weirdies floating around out there. And that is the good part, the fun part. So, yeah, I'm thinking that this is going to be pretty awesome. They're very, very nice to handle. They're very nice to color with. And even though that they seem like they're so big, they don't feel big like that. You know, they, they, they feel good in the hand. And um, the color flows nice and easily out of them. You have to think that I've had this set lying around for like four years, and I have colored quite a lot with it. Um, so they're pretty, pretty good quality, one can say. So, yeah. This is going to be nice. So, um, yeah, and uh, remember to check out the videos I made. Uh, the video was really great. But you see the work that all you guys did also, because... Uh, that's what makes it fun, and I have uh, I couldn't tag everyone uh, when I posted it. Um, there's a few that I can't tag, and that might be because you've got your set settings so that you can't be tagged, and that's okay too. But I just want to let you know that it's not because I didn't try or I forgot about you or something. I didn't, and I have all your names in the video so that people can see who who colored, which I think is important. Um, just as important that people know who was the artist or where the book was from, you know, where they can get the material if they like it. Those are important things. 
both for our artists and for the for the, for the viewers, you know. So that was this one. What was it called? Dark chrome yellow. I really like this dark chrome yellow. It's a beautiful, beautiful uh, color. Now we're going to orange glaze. And these, they have the stars for light fastness, which I really like to have. I mean, I like that indicator to see what I'm working with. Um, and here you see, I'm going to be backtracking here. And you can see like I can get into the fine places easily because the tip is very fine and it's very manageable. It's not too soft. Uh, so um, it's very nice and light to color with which is hopefully also good for my arm, my unhappy, oh, my unhappy little arm. Um, so yeah, this, uh, this is a, a beautiful, um, beautiful material. It's not on the, on the cheap side. It is a pretty expensive one, but it, um, it works really well. Uh, so in that aspect, it's good. It's, it's, a, it's a good thing, you know, like uh, to save for something special, you know, if you can afford it. Otherwise, you know, my Tiger Markers are also really good. There's not 48 different colors, but it doesn't matter because you can mix and match them and, and you can get anything out of any set. It's really up to you. I mean, it's always nice to have great materials and all the color porn things, but, but it's not necessary in order to have a good time coloring, you know. It's just the, the icing on the cake, you know. And uh, I'm definitely lucky that I have a lot of materials, but some of it I also collected over years, and I've been very lucky with the presents. I have gotten a lot of presents uh, of coloring materials. So I'm very lucky with that, uh, and uh, I'm very happy with that because that makes gives me a possibility to try them out and and talk about them and tell everybody how I find them. So I'm hoping that that can also help others in, you know, making their decisions of what to hold out out for or wait for or or save up for or be interested in. It could be a help. It's always a help to, to hear others' opinion of a material. Of course, you know, it's very rare that I actually use a material that I don't like. Uh, that's more like if it's the first time that I use it. Uh, because usually if I don't like it, it will, uh, it will go in my daughter's uh, paint uh, marker or colored pencil collection straight away, you know. That's where it goes if it gets disapproved, because she she doesn't you know she's not as uh, as judgmental as I am on it. <laughs> she just, uh, but I think you know she really likes the tiger margas too. So I'm just gonna backtrack here so that I get the right vibe in there. This is pretty. It's already pretty. So yeah, I had a great first week. And I'm looking forward to now starting the second week with you guys. And I hope more people will join us. And remember to get your weirdies. I mean, I'm not able to post as much about now it's up there and this and that. I post straight after uh, after the video. I put up the one for, you know, yesterday I put up the one for the ninth. That's the one for tomorrow. So it's already on the pay hip. And uh, when I'm finished here, I'll put up the tenth so that you have it like two days in advance. And then please feel sh free to share that post so that everybody else can get it. I can't post on any groups. I can't even comment on your pretty uh, uh, colored pieces or anything uh, on groups. I can only post like here or on my own personal page. And I think I can post on the Global Doodle Gems book page uh, because that's not a group either. So I'm thinking I can do that. I tried at least, you know. Uh, so I haven't checked because I was in a hurry. In a hurry, hurry. This is lovely. Let me see this. It's a beautiful color. It's called Scarlet Red. It's a nice red. 
I have found before when I first started out using them, at first I was a little bit, I thought they were a little bit streaky. But it really also depends a lot on the paper, I think. These are also water-based, so you'll see they don't go through as much. They go through more than the little brother, and that's simply because they just hold more ink, they hold more uh, liquid, so they will uh, make the paper more wet, uh, whereas the alcohol will just see right on through, unless you have specific uh, paper for alcohol markers. They have a, a special coating, and this has got nothing to do with the thickness of the paper. There's a lot of people who who misinterpret and think that necessarily uh, thick paper is great. No, no, uh, not necessarily. A lot of the thick paper will eat up all your ink and kill your marker. So be careful with that. The best paper for markers is marker paper, and that is ultra thin. It's even thinner than this copy paper. It feels thinner. And it's very, 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 it's got a treatment on the surface that does that the alcohol won't seep through and bleed. And I will show you, um, now this time I didn't print any on the marker paper. I do have some marker paper that I got from Viking that is really, really like top of the line marker paper. Um, and they gave me that when they gave me the style file markers. So, um, and that is awesome. I made a review of it, uh, of the paper. Because I was even surprised myself. I hadn't, I hadn't really thought that it would be that big difference using it. Um, you definitely will save a lot in ink, but then you have to take into consideration of the price of the paper. You know, there's always a, when I mean, there's an up, there's a down, uh, so um, there's always different things uh, in all these materials that you have to consider when you are looking to purchase. And the main thing is you also have to consider what is the use. You know, what are you going to use your colored piece for? Are you going to put it in a file, in a folder, and just save it? Is it going to, um, are you going to put it in a frame and give it away? You know, there's different things and different considerations. If you're going to frame it and give it away, you might want to, you know, go for more, you know, better material with more light fastness, um, a better paper or something. Um, but if you're gonna just enjoy coloring it and put it in a in a in a folder uh, to look at sometimes, then you know this is not a reason to go all in on the unless you know you have it and you enjoy coloring it with it. But you know it's sort of. But if you're gonna give it away as a present or or frame it and hang it, you might want to think a little bit more about how the lifespan of the piece is going to be. So yeah, that's things to consider. And here we have one that is called Permanent Carmine. I do love the names. They're very classical uh, names. Hi, Patricia. Awesome to see you. And welcome to the party. So yeah, classical names of these uh, colors. And they're very beautifully, you know, like, they do go well in sequence. Um, I don't remember if this is the exact order that I got them in, because I might have switched around the order a few times, because I have had this set for well over four years, I think. And uh, it's been used a lot. There was, like, a special sale one day where I got a huge discount. And... Uh, I was lucky to get it for a reasonable price. Um, I think it was like 50% off or something that day, that particular day. They had it on it. Yeah, the, now I remember. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was embarrassing. It was on their, like, on their website with the 50% off. Uh, and I went into the shop to get it. And then they were like, no, 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 it's over, that offer is over. And then I said, well, it's on the website. No, but it's over. And, uh, and I was like, it's on the website. And they called the manager. And he's like, well, you know, if it's on the website, I have to sell it to you to that price. Cool. Thank you. And I was just happy when I walked out with it. And then they had to update their website, didn't they? 
Don't think you're gonna let go, get away with that with me. <laughs> so yeah, so I got this for, I think it was 50% off. It was really, really good. It was a really good deal. Yeah, it did, did hurt my food budget because <laughs> it was way too much, but, um, but we didn't manage in the end and, and I, I got these. So. And then on top of that, after I got them, I was so afraid to open the box and sort of, you know, I would open it and look at them but I was afraid to start using them. <laughs> so it actually took a long time before I, uh, I, I even used them, really, uh, funny enough. But I think sometimes you're just in awe of something that you think is awesome or you dreamt of having, and then it takes a little bit of while to actually believe that you have it and, and uh, to then break them out and, and, and start using them. Yeah. So I'm really, it's a, it's a special set for me, um, this one. And I have used them on quite a big, few big posters, so we'll see if we're going to get to anything that's run dry, that there is a distinct possibility of that happening. Um, though I haven't really experienced that they've been, we'll see what happens. So here is the next little one here, doy, doy, doy. And this one is continuing nicely here. So yeah, it's spreading out, getting that nice vibe, and we're testing out these colors. This, this one is much more red than what it looks. It looks a little bit pinkish on the outside, of, on the barrel, but definitely isn't when it, it, uh, when it hits the paper. Um, yeah, this one has had a tendency to be a little bit more streaky, but that has been on my heavy-duty... Uh, cardstock paper that I use for the big, big, big drawings um, and that one will suck a lot more of. This is pink carmine, so that's the one that goes after that. Um, so yeah, and I'm also looking forward to the drawing of tomorrow. Well, I'm looking forward to all the weirdies every time because I do truly love those weirdies. I didn't have time to draw today, so I'm thinking that maybe after I will, it depends on how, how long it takes, maybe I'll do like a short twist up, but it will be separate video. Because I also did get those uh, mini twisters for the positivity twisters, I got them scanned yesterday too, yes, I was a busy woman. I did do an awful lot of work, um, which means I never made it to bed yesterday. Uh, because it was so late when I was finished getting the video up, uh, the speed version of the live video of yesterday, that it was too late to really go to bed because I still have to be up at 6.30 so, uh, to get my daughter ready and go to, you know, walk her to school and all that. So, uh, you know, if you go to bed at 5 and you have to be up at 6.30, there is a distinct possibility that you will definitely not make it up. Uh, so I prefer to just... Uh, stay up and work through and then after I took her to school I took a long nap uh, well it was actually quite late that I got to the nap because I had to, yeah I had to finish up a lot of things especially also I wanted to make this week you know recap of our first week um, and and you know when you start on a video it always ends up taking a lot longer then you anticipate it, and uh, it did take a lot longer. But I really wanted to, to get it done because I wanted to show you guys what an awesome week we had and how much we actually got done and how beautiful our results are. So I thought that that would be nice to get that up after the first seven days so that we can start the new week and this does not mean that if you, for instance, color uh, Weirdy 1, uh, that it won't be in the video in the end. It will, because I have the video as an open project, so I will be adding to it uh, every time that there's new colors. So don't worry about that. And, and I know that uh, some of you guys wanted to, to scan um, your colored. And, you know, once you have them scanned and I have those, then I'll just, you know, replace 
uh, you don't have to email those scans because it's, it's okay, you know, it'll just be straight and look a little bit better in some cases. Not in all. Um, so, um, so, you know, then I'll just, you know, switch it out, you know, exchange that picture for the other one that might be a slightly better one. So it's not really to worry about. It will all be there in the end. And I might make individual videos. For those of you who manage, well, you know, I might make some individual videos when we're finished. I don't know. It will happen what happens because it also sort of depends on how many all of a sudden, if all of a sudden there's like 500 participating, then it might not be feasible for me to to do the videos as much or as, you know, uh, work as much on them that I have to put a lot of things in there. Hi, Heather. Nice to see you. Um, so, yeah, it, it will sort of depend how the whole thing develops and pans out. And, but there will be videos. I don't know how often. It will always depend on when I have a time. And, and I will try to make, you know, I do like this idea of a little recap. And I do think that uh, a weekly recap is probably more feasible uh, to begin with. And then those can be put together to a monthly one, um, just because of uh, of the the lengthiness. You know, we want it to be a, a recap that can be watched fairly quickly. You know, you don't don't want to have a recap that takes hours. And so, and I I think. I think that I got it under 15 minutes. The first one was under 10, but it was too fast, the video clips. But the next one that's just over 13 minutes, I think that's a good good length, and you can see, a little, you know, it's not as stressy to see me coloring it. I mean, coloring it 240 times the speed is maybe too fast. I mean, 60 times is a really good, nice fade. Um, Nice face, I don't know. Um, nice speed uh, to see it and get something out of it. Whereas then the last one, I have it at 120, that's double that. But it still gives an idea. And when you have seven of those videos in there, it does take up some time. So I'm thinking that the last one is, is probably what I will go for in, the, in how I'm going to do those speed videos in there. But you'll always have the recap of the daily one where it is it's a sixty times so so that is a is a nice one. But it's also good to get some material out. You know, then you know if people see it they'll be more interested in in joining us uh for the weirdy because it's it's fun and you can see that it's fun. This one, what is it called? Magenta. I don't feel that this is magenta at all. I feel that it is uh, uh, maybe Bourgogne or something like that. Uh, not magenta, definitely not in my book. In my book is a very very deep red wine. Um, it's a beautiful color, but magenta it is not in my book. So yeah. So how have you guys been? Have you been busy? Coloring is Monday. A lot of people hate Mondays. I don't really hate Mondays. There's other days that I'm not fond of, but Mondays, I don't really have a problem with them. That is also a beautiful color, this one, I think. Uh, even though that the name is totally wrong for it. Uh, in my opinion, in my humble opinion, I do not think that this color has anything to do with magenta. But there you can see the concept and the vision of what one thinks a color is or isn't is so different, and you really see that in the different sets. I mean, that's why I sometimes like to take colors that have the same name from different sets and just set them next to each other in my uh, my color companion just to check out how different the concept of those who made up the names have been of what that color is. Maybe I've, I've seen a lot of things where men don't see as many colors as women do. 
Maybe it's men who name them. I don't know. Maybe they have like departments of men that don't see color really well and then they just come out with random names. Could be, I don't know. <laughs> Could explain a great deal. But it is pretty. And it's going to be fun to see how they develop out in this, in that order that they're in the box. Because to me, the order looks quite okay, but I'm not sure. I mean, definitely not sure about the blues. But, you know, just to work with them like that, no stress about rearranging them or anything right now. We don't want to stress about anything. No stress. We're having weirdy, weirdy fun. So, yeah. Um, so all together it was a good day. Victoria had a play date, so I had to pick her up at uh, quarter past seven, and she ate at her friend's place. So that was nice. Um, they haven't seen each other during the Christmas, really. So, so she would, she, they were excited to hang out and and play. She does have a lot of play dates, I think. But that's good, she's popular. They like her, so she's always a busy, busy little girl. And I think it's good that she has a nice social life and has lots of friends. It's it's healthy. I didn't have a lot of friends when I was a kid, so yeah, very fun. <laughs> Mom is better. I can lift it. Uh and I've been putting the spray on it. I mean, when I stretch it, I can feel it. Um, but it's definitely better. So I think, you know, it will be going down. I think it's just, you know, getting used to uh, working the arm differently because I do, uh, it is very different from when I'm, I'm drawing, for instance, the way I sit or the way I hold the material. It is a pretty one, this one. I like this one. Uh, yeah, the first one I colored in was it yellow and red and black, I think. Sort of like a, yeah, Spanish, uh, Spanish bull. Because that was how I saw it right off. So, yeah. And it is really nice. I like these brushes because they are that that little bit more sturdy uh, than the style file ones that are really, really soft. I mean, they're not that soft. You can still control them, but they're a lot softer than this one. So I think I probably like... It's also the style of how you color. Um, I just probably prefer a little bit sturdier uh, tips. I don't get as worried. Uh, that I'll break them or, you know, totally ruin them with all my might and power. <laughs> yeah, so I'm definitely, I prepared, like, I have a whole bunch of uh, small twister for, for the positivity that I haven't filled yet. And those are prepared so that we can, so I can fill them. Uh, filming it, so that's if. Ah, uh, thank you, Heather. I made a new version of the video that is a little bit longer, where I think you can see better. It's it's like just over thirteen minutes, and the other one was eight something. Uh, and it's up there, but I think the other one is a little bit less, you know, like uh, confusing to watch. Whereas I think the first one. I might have gotten ahead of myself of how fast I wanted it to go so that it ended up being a little bit messy and confusing. The second one, the music is a bit boring because it was actually the only uh, music I could choose that was, uh, you know, ad-free and everything on, on, on YouTube um, because I do put them on my YouTube um, hoping that we will you know, then more people will see it um, and follow my YouTube channel, etc. And, and then I do put uh, advertisements in them because then 
if uh, if I'm lucky enough that one video goes a little bit more viral, then you know I might have a little bit income or or you know I could be lucky that some color manufacturers see it and they think oh my god we want to sponsor her and we want ads on her YouTube channel you know that could provide a little income if if I was lucky enough for that to happen but you know you never know but if you just keep it in mind when you're doing it and producing the material for it then then you know if it happens it happens and if it doesn't it doesn't so uh, one can always dream dream so yeah so I dream a lot I'm a dreamer but I'm not like the kind of dreamer who dreams and does nothing I'm the kind of dreamer who dreams and then tries to do something practical to to change it so that's my dreaminess um, so I I work hard and uh, I try to keep working hard, even people that say to me, why do you keep doing that if you're not like really making money on it? I say, because this is my life, this is, this is what I love to do. And I think if you try to do what you love to do, you also have your heart inside of everything you're doing. So yeah, you gotta, and if you don't believe or try, then you get nowhere. You know, if you just give up, it's not gonna work ever. That's the best way to, to fail is to give up, you know? And then you'll never know if you could have made it if you just stayed in and was strong and kept going. So I stay in, I stay strong, and I keep going. Uh, because that's my nature, I'm stop and donkey. And I actually kind of like being a stop and donkey. So it's, uh, it's probably not gonna change anytime soon. <laughs> I'll not let anything deter me. I'll just keep pushing on and, and doing my thing. And yeah, little by little, more and more people will probably discover what I do. And some will hate it and some will love it. And that's fine. You know, uh, what I do is not for everyone. And what others do is not for everyone. So that's nice. Now I do do a lot of different things. So that means that it's probably easier to find something within what I do that one likes. Um, because I do work in different materials and stuff like that. So, yeah. In that way, you know, if you don't like this, you might like Twisters, or you might like my Magic World, or, or my Mandalas, or, you know, something else. You know, it doesn't have to... Not everybody has to love weirdies, even though it's kind of weird not to love weirdies. <laughs> that was a good pun. Yeah. Cheesy one. I know. So we're going on to the 12th color. So we're getting a lot of different colors in here. We're getting a lot of variety. Oh, thank you, Patricia. I try to be a... Uh... Oh, you've been tweeting them. That's so cool, Heather. I try to be positive because, you know, if you're not positive, how, how can you expect things to go well if you just sit down and say, oh, this is not going to work out, you know, then, then it's already, then you already failed in my, in my book. Or another, I had a friend that I've been trying to help sometimes, you know, to get started. Yeah, I'll do it next week or I'll think out the concept and, uh, and I'll begin uh, in a couple of months when I got the concept down. But nothing ever happens, you know, that nothing, nothing ever happens. Because if you don't start, then you're never going to get closer to realizing or learning uh, how to move on. So it can be difficult. I mean, it took me ages to start. I mean, for me, uh, you know, just to start sharing my art online was difficult. Before, you know, I was I had my own own uh, studio and gallery in in Spain, and then people would come there, or I would go be in some other gallery with my paintings, and then I'd have to stand around with a little glass of champagne in my hand and all dressed up and uh, I hated that and I really hated that part it's sort of like oh not me um, so yeah but uh, you know moving from that and to just sharing on social media and trying to do stuff there that took me a long time I also had a long period where I didn't 
was able to work uh, and, and produce and, and uh, draw and paint and do all those things. And that was like when I had Victoria. It was so busy and hectic, so I didn't have the, the time in the same sense to just like get deep into what I, when I paint, you know, I can be lost for like a couple of days where I don't like, you know, I, I'm in another world uh, painting and, and you know, you can't do that with a baby. That's kind of, no, it doesn't work like that. So, you know, I kind of stopped and it also took me some time to recoup after moving back to Denmark and I was sick for a while. Uh, uh, so, so I was, yeah, I was pretty sick. And, um, and then, you know, when, when I got over that a little bit and I started functioning better here, uh, you know, like it was a big move. I, I, I lived for 15 years in a little village in Spain. So moving back to Denmark and starting a new life with a one year old was not uh, exactly easy. Um, so it took me some time to sort of feel that I had that, you know, extra, extra sass, you know, the, the extra, you know, brain power, whatever, you know, like uh, to just move on. That, uh, yeah, that took me some time. And then when I started drawing, I was like, oh, this is what I've been missing. This is what has been wrong. So, you know, that was a really good feeling. It was just like coming home. And then I just, instead of doing big things and paintings, because now I'm living in an apartment where I can't just have oil paints everywhere. And besides, it's really expensive to buy canvas. Then I just bought these ones, you know, and paper. And then I was just drawing on that and bought cheap, big cardstock paper. And I was drawing big things there. And then I've got into the whole adult coloring and started drawing in those sizes and that fits really well with what I can manage. Uh, so, so that is really good now. I hope to do big paintings again and big, bigger projects again. But right now this uh, suits me really well. Uh, and I've moved on a lot. I have drawn a lot. This is crimson. It's called crimson. I've, I've drawn really a lot. I mean, I've, I've, uh, I've published 80 books that I drew, uh, so that's a lot of drawings. Also because my books are not like, uh, my books are not, uh, you know, with 25 pages in each. That's only like Imagine World 1 has 25 and Imagine World 2 has 23, but that one is not available on print yet uh, because I'm hoping that I'll get around to drawing two more before I make the print book. But usually my books have between 50 and 250 pages drawings inside. So that's a lot of work. Um, and I have had the pleasure also to to do some books where I did them with Johanna Ans, where she did 25% uh, of the drawings and I did 75%. That is like uh, the egg books, the egg design books and the Xmas ornaments books that we worked together on. And that was really fun because it's fun to talk with each other about the drawings and it's fun to work from the same templates and see each other's results and and uh, yeah just just the fun you know talk about it on skype and show each other what we did you know that was a cool process and so in that aspect it's, it's nice to sometimes work with others as well and we do have kind of similar i mean our styles are different, but still they they don't clash. So um, so we can work together like that. This is nice. I do think that this has like you know like normally my alcohol markers, they are not streaky, and I do think that this has a tendency of being slightly streaky, which I hate. Um, but I've seen worse. But I do think that that is the case sometimes that that uh, I'm not too happy about that. Um, and I do I wasn't sure if I was going to see it here, but I do see it that the uh, and also you know if you put too much down, it can eat the paper a bit. So that's the only really negative points I can say about these uh, markers, except that I do like working with them. So this one they call crimson would be more in the line of what I would call magenta. 
uh, much more. But it is in lovely color for sure. And they, they seem to be pretty full of. Uh, I really do love the boxes they come into, and I think that that's also probably part of the price point. They are really beautiful boxes, beautiful design, and and awesomely made. Yes, I know Easter is coming. I have the two egg books, the little big book of egg designs with over four hundred eggs to color, and then there's the big little book of egg designs with 101 eggs to color and I am actually I'm working on that it's a good thing you reminded me I'm working on making a tiny a few tiny books like the really small ones where they are four by um, by six inches like uh, the ones I had for the gift tags oh my god why does he always call when I'm doing live video one second Hey. Hello. Hi. You have a tendency to call in the middle of my live video, sweetie. Can I call you after? I do live video at this hour. You know, I'll, I'll be closing around maybe half past 12, 1. Can I call you there? Okay, I'll try. Bye-bye. Okay, sorry about that. Hearts is coming. I just uh, I made three hard books. Um, there's going to be four books. One that is sort of heart mandalas that is called Lovely Dallas with 50 uh, yeah, heart-based uh, mandalas. And then there's uh, abstract love that is sort of also mandala concept, but a little bit out of the round shapes. There will be other shapes in that too. So that is a little bit out of the box. And then there is a full pattern, uh, uh, love patterns, love the patterns or something. I, I, that, now I don't have the names right now in my head. And then there is uh, the one where never too many hearts. And the one that's going to call, be called Never Too Many Hearts will have all three books in it. So if you just really love hearts, then that is the one to go for because it will have all those three complete books inside. And each of the others, um, they will be $9.99 a piece. And then the big one with all three books in will be $14.99. I, I have them approved and everything. And... Uh, I think I'm going to publish around the 15th uh, of this month. I have made the covers and maybe I should put up the covers on the page so you guys can see it. I have to still do the videos, uh, but I've been so busy with these videos, so I have to do the presentation videos. But they will both be available on Amazon as physical books and I will put them on the pay hip. Uh, where I still have that discount on that if you share socially you'll get 50% in there. Uh, PayHip can recognize that you shared in from the Buy Now page and then it will give you 50% so which is kind of an awesome deal. Uh, so they will be up soon, the hard books. Uh, yes, that's another hard book. That's uh, in December. That one I actually have lying right next to me here in December. That is totally full of hearts. Is this one in December. That's the charity charity concept. And it's the same heart. All of them is the same heart. So you see it's like kind of like heart frames or heart cards. And everybody got the same heart to work from. And then it was up to them how to fill it and, and make it their heart. And a lot of artists did more than one. So there's a lot of different artists represented in this one. I forgot where I was with this one. Oh, this is a new one I'm starting with now. Yeah, so I have that and one that's full of hearts and then I have my own new ones that are coming out here a month before Valentine's. But they're gonna be, you know, it's not, I wouldn't call them Valentine's books because, um, I mean, hearts you can color for everything. Um, 
so yeah, I have those that I worked on and I almost forgot about them. And then finally I got them done the other day. I was so happy. Um, got it finished and uploaded everything, made those covers and yeah, and they're really beautiful. So they, they, they're going to be fun, fun books. This is a nice, nice color. So yeah, there's a, there's a, there's definitely something coming, and I should really get moving on that Easter thing, of the tiny books. I do think I did a lot of it. This is called manganese violet. Manganese violet. That sounds kind of like a funny name. I'm gonna take my sweater off. It's a bit too hot in here. So. Yeah, so I have that, and I have the second book of frames. The big book of spheres is just out. I, I, oh, I love those spheres. But uh, I really don't have time to color the spheres now because I'm so busy with the weirdies. Uh, but they're beautiful, and there's lots of colored examples in the album with the spheres, so that is pretty awesome. This is a lovely color. I like this manganese violet. It's a funny name, but it, it's a lovely color. Yeah, and I do find that they're a little bit streaky. I don't like that. I think these are probably better on some different paper uh, with a more smooth... I mean, this has a smooth surface, but these probably need something with a very... I don't know what they need. I don't know what they need. But I'm not totally happy with, I mean, I think it's a bit streaky for me, um, personally. Uh, I probably have to, like, you know, enhance them a bit in Photoshop, I think, to make them more like full. If you order off the Hey, hip, then it's a PDF you get uh, where you have to print it. And if you order off Amazon, it's a printed book that you get. Um, so that's sort of the difference. Like, I, I recommend Pay Hip uh, if you want to print it on the paper that you like, uh, or if you, for instance, want to print it a little bit bigger uh, because the files that I put. Are big enough for to print like in A3 like I do. And I do think that also helps a lot with the tiny spaces. Uh, I do like to 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 color in that size, um, as I think it gives. It's just nice to have a bigger piece to work on, and if you want to frame it or do something with it afterwards, I also think it's nice to have it in a big size. But it definitely depends on what your preference is. Um, but if it's from PayHip, you download the files and then you print them. Uh, all my books are on Amazon right now, except for Imagine World 2 and the Big Book of Spheres. But the Big Book of Spheres will be on pretty soon. I just have to order the proofs, and I want to order them with the with the Valentine ones. Um, so that it will be available on Amazon. I mean, I have more books available on Amazon uh, than I do on my PayHip because I haven't uploaded all of them to Amazon. Amazon.com. Um, in my there's a album on the page that is called uh, My Books, where there's 80, 80 things inside, and that's where I have all the books that are on Amazon listed. Uh, that are my books. Uh, there's another one where there's where I appear in. It's books where there are other artists that are part of the books as well. But uh, that one album with 80 books inside, 
that says is it they're mine. They have direct links to Amazon. And then it kind of depends where you live. I mean, uh, on the pay hip is the only place you can get the discount because I can't make discounts on Amazon. Only Amazon can make discounts there. And on PayHip, that's where I get the most out of it. Um, but it really depends on what your preference is. If it's a, if it's a printed book in the hand, or if you like to print them out yourself. I do say that sometimes with the, I mean, I love the feel of a book in my hand. But I think you know sometimes with the coloring, it might be fun to be able to print out more of the same. And there is that aspect of printing on maybe your preferred paper if you, I mean, there's nothing wrong with the, with the Amazon, with the paper of the Amazon. It's thin, but it's been tested. I, I have tested it and, and a lot of others have tested it with the various materials and it is nothing bad with it. It depends where you get it from uh, because uh, if they're printed in Poland, uh, which some are if you get them through Amazon Germany, um, then the paper quality is distinctly worse, I would say. It's not, uh, it's not awesome. Uh, definitely not. So we're going in here for another purple. Uh, this one says purple violet. Yeah. But you can also get them on Book Depository, on Barnes and Nobles, all their web shops. I think even Walmart has them in their web shop. I, I, I'm not quite sure. Yeah, there's some big, but that's uh, that's because they pick it up from something that's called Ingram, uh, a Nielsen book scan. Uh, so that means that even the Danish web shops of um, of books, they actually have my books available as well because they pick up the listings there. Uh, and then they don't really have the books, they just have them listed and if they then get orders of them, then they will order them off of Amazon. Um, so that's how it works. That's also why you'll see that there's also third party, sometimes there's third, par third party sellers before I'm even like, mine are on, it's like crazy. People jump on it and yeah, really strange strange how this works and very it's not very transparent system because for instance I get no information on who bought it or anything I only get when I get my information from from Amazon I only get uh, the information if it was bought in euros dollars or pounds nothing else I don't even get the date that's bought uh, is is I don't I don't like that reporting system because it feels like it's not transparent. And that you can't really check out if it's all to the aces with it. So it can feel like a bit cheeky. These are lovely colors. But yeah, I don't like that streakiness. Maybe it's because it, it there's so much ink flowing out of them that then it's uh, harder to control um, how f how much ink flows. It doesn't. I don't know. This is what I love about my. I I think I've noticed that this with the, in general with the water based markers, that they do have a tendency to be more streaky and not as uh, as flowy like you know like the as nice a finish as I see with the alcohol markers. I see a much prettier finish with the alcohol markers, I have to say. But the sick clean ones, yeah, they also, yeah, I would say, I would say that this probably is an issue of uh, the, the water-based marker that is just, uh, is different uh, than an alcohol-based marker. So I think that that's where the issue is of what I, do, what I don't like. So this might just be a general water-based marker thing for me. The streaky thingy. But it also, if, if you, for instance, I think, 
But if you live in Europe, you will buy off of one of the European Amazons. And they do get, even, even Canada now gets them, and I think Australia will start getting them too. Which is pretty cool because it's been difficult in Australia. No, now I really have to check, check. So this was these two I made there. I think I'm getting lost. Yeah, I'm here. This is where I'm at. I was just thinking. But I mean, I, I've been very happy with uh, having the books on Amazon because it makes them available worldwide. And, uh, and that's awesome. And I. Exactly, they do cost a lot more, the alcohol based, except for you know, the, the tiger ones I have, they're, they're the cheapest ones I have, uh, and they are really good. Um, but these water based markers, these ones that I'm using right now, are like top of the line uh, and expensive ones. So, you know, I would like them not to be streaky. Uh, but I think it's a water marker thing. And then it is most likely uh, also my paper. That my paper is just not good enough for these markers. This, this, these markers might need uh, some paper that is more in tune with their royalty, <laughs> with how absolutely fabulous they're supposed to be. Um, so uh, it might be that that interferes too, that I don't have the correct paper for them. Um, in a lot of cases, it's not really the material, it might be what you're working it with um, that can also have a, a, an impact on your result. And since I'm just using the regular copy paper, because that's what I have, and it's in my copier, so I use that and, you know, then it's not the best option probably for these markers. It's great for my alcohol markers because they just work awesomely on them. But these ones, I don't think they are digging it that much. They, uh, they were made for better, better paper. <laughs> so, yeah. So we're moving on. Let's see, we're getting into the blues. Into the blues. I think I'm gonna dump all the the nude uh, colors and uh, the browns and grays because we still have a lot of greens and we have a uh, a few blues and turquoise. So I think that would be enough. I should probably do something with just browns and grays at a point, <laughs> just to just to use them also. Uh, because these things always get dumped by me. Uh, the other day I was using all the ones that I didn't use. And this one, what is it called? This one is called Ultramarine. Ultramarine. I should probably like uh, get my friend to follow me on Facebook, then he can sort of like, uh... <coughs> and then before he calls me, he can check if I'm on live, you know, then he won't be calling in the middle of the video all the time. That would be smart if he just did that, then he can go in on my aunt page, have a look, is she live? Okay, she's live, I can't call right now. But I guess it's also really annoying if it's always the time where he wants to call. <laughs> Too bad, I'm a bussy. So yeah. 
and I'm great at saying that I'll call back and then it'll be way later uh, before I remember that I was supposed to call back. You know that feeling when you say you're going to call back and you really mean that you're going to call back, but you forget it? Hi, Bev. Awesome to see you. Yeah, I would say I am. I'm going to draw a mini twister. I already have like one that's lined up. Uh, and I'm going to make a new video after, and I'm going to do that, because yesterday I scanned all the ones I have, and I have for like one month of positivity in the first nine days of the next one, um, and I want to get them going, and I want to do it uh, together with you guys for inspiration of uh, the positive quotes, because I want them to be like little encouraging books that you can sort of work on your self image yourself look look on yourself you know like work on on uh, being more happy with yourself you know so I, I want that to be something positive or encouraging mantra thing that you can think about while you're coloring it and that's supposed to in my book help you feel it more because you're focused in a meditative state where you're just playing with the colors and thinking about this little positive mantra doesn't have to be something big, you know, uh, just little positive things. And I was thinking it could be fun to to draw this. I have to draw a lot more. And um, to draw them with you guys, then we can sort of talk about different mantras or positive thoughts that one can put in um, and sort of be a part of, of what's going to be in the book. And it has not too long uh, quotes, I think, it's shorter ones, um, because I was thinking to make like two versions of each twister, one where it's just the twister, and one where it's the twister with the actual, ah, you're home from the stables, awesome, <laughs> great time to get started. Uh, so yeah, so that the... Um, so you get one where the quote is on top of the pattern and one where the pattern does not get disturbed by the quote but where the quote is next to it on the page next to it so that it's easier to think about. I was thinking that it should be something like like that, you know, like just and, and they're not big, they're only five by five inches. So the book is gonna be six by six inches, a little square thing. Uh that is easy to bring along, hopefully. Not not as small as a tiny book, of course, but a little one. So, so this is Christmas, and what have we done? It is now that I begin to sing those Christmas songs. So yeah, I was um, thinking that that could be fun. And to get started, we have to just start. But I want it to be separate videos, um, so that they don't get confused with each other. Um, also because some might like to be part of that and others might like to be part of this so you know separate it a bit so it will probably be like after I finish this one it will probably be five minutes or something then I put on the next one and and then we go for it go for it the first one but usually it will probably be at different times of the day but I have to sort of find a rhythm of what fits I have to also find a rhythm of, of going to sleep and maybe trying to obsess less about getting the speed video ready because it takes so long to download uh, the live video. Uh, so I'm waiting for like a couple of hours and, and you know then it gets late and yeah, I've turned around my, my clock a lot. And uh, so you know if I could turn it around so that I go to bed earlier and get up earlier, then I could also make maybe some of those in the daytime, in my daytime. So we'll have to see what happens. I was thinking to put them on my Patreon, but I think I'm going to wait with my Patreon a bit until I see it. Maybe, you know, next year or something. I don't think my 
Patreon is really ready and it's a lot of work to to get it, you know, the way that I want it. Exactly, we all need encouragement and sometimes we forget to pat, pat ourselves on the shoulder and, and be positive towards ourselves. So if we have a little little positivity twist, twist a chill pill, no, twist a positivity chill pill, then maybe, you know, um, just the fact that we sit and and think about that little positive thought or mantra will help us remember to, you know, be nice to ourselves. That was sort of my idea about it, you know, that it should just be, I wanted to do it like a daily, daily one. Uh, you know, I wanted to make a book with, yeah, 366 of them. But then I was deterred because I couldn't put that many images in because there's not that many pages because they have to be single pages and, yeah. And uh, then Heather suggested that I make them like a seasonal, so like for three months at a time. But now I'm thinking if I'm going to put two versions, I might just make them monthly. So I'm not quite settled on, because, uh, you know, yeah, it, we'll see. Because, you know, if I did make them that they were like more like a monthly thing, then they could also have like maybe, you know, you could make notes in them or something like that, you know, like maybe just uh, put a little thing about something positive that happened to you that day, you know, to remember and, you know, out of that day, you know, you know, try to see what happened today that I can possibly see in a positive light or something that will, you know, make that day brighter so that, when you go back and look at it, you can see, oh, okay, well, it wasn't all bad, you know? Um, I mean, we all have bad days, but most of the time, even if a day is bad, we will be able to find something nice, you know? Maybe, maybe you had some nice food, you know, something positive, or you saw something nice, or heard something nice, or there was a nice person who did something nice for you, or, you know, it's always my... It might be very little things. It might just be that, oh, I saw a beautiful flower, you know. I mean, it could be anything just to find something that is nice. Hi, Rose. Awesome to see you. Uh, just find something nice. Um, so, you know, I'm thinking that I wanted it to be something like that. It's a little happy thing, you know. This is nice. It is developing nicely in the colors. I mean, it looks better on the camera. Uh, you don't see the streakiness as much as I do, but I'm also OCD on, on stuff like that. I, I, I'm, I am really OCD on that. I do like these markers a lot, and I have worked with them a lot, but I don't like the streakiness. I do find they're a little bit streaky. But yeah, I will. I think you know. I will try to ask in the art shop which paper they recommend for this, for these markers, and then maybe try them on that paper to see if they're still streaky. Because I'm quite sure that it might just be my shit paper that is uh, that is interacting and not making them live up to their full potential. Uh, that could very well be, and then also they're very wet, you know. So, uh, but they are beautiful colors. I do love Faber Castell. It's, it's a very old brand um, that has existed and developed their pigments and stuff for for many years. So it's a it's a very recognized brand in the art world. And uh, I think it's from yeah. They started out in seventeen hundred and sixty one. So it's not like a new brand that just uh, started developing their product. It's a, it's a very recognized artist brand um, that has been in existence for a very long time. And they also make a beautiful, uh, what's called, fountain pens. Really pricey, beautiful fountain pens. I used to love fountain pens. I used to have a, a Dupont gold one. I lost that um, with the lighter that fit, fitted with it. It was a very pretty, pretty one that I got for my birthday once when I was a young woman. 
Uh, very awesome, nice. And I've seen some really brilliant like uh, pens, dip dipping pens uh, that are made of glass, like Venetian glass that is like hand blown. Oh my God, they're beautiful. I really love them. I saw those on the internet, but I'm afraid, you know, I don't, you know, with the, with the pressure that I put on, I would probably break a j delicate uh, glass nip like that very, very fast and be very sad, you know. But they do look very, very pretty. I saw this guy, Peter Draws. He makes fantastic videos. It's a great inspiration to look at his video. I, I really, he's crazy and funny and, and totally out there and crazy and funny and a great artist. And he was using them with the, you know, this... Um, uh, he was using them with glow in the dark ink and this UV light and it was just awesome it just looks so cool I would love to make a video like that but you know then I'd have to get UV light and glow in the dark ink and this awesome you know kind of uh, glass uh, uh, dip pen and I, I'm not even sure that I would be really good at it. So I enjoy watching this. It's just like, wow, I love that. I want to try it. I want to try it. So maybe one day I will. You know, if you love something and you feel like I want to try it, then you should probably try it at some point. So I will. At some point, I'll probably do it just to see how it feels. I also have to sort of develop my... A little bit with the with the drawing live, you know, I have to sort of get really comfortable with it. So that's why I'm starting with the twisters because I have the twisters inside. You know, I'm I'm uh, I'm not worried. You know, uh, whereas with other drawings, I might not wanna do them live because I might tear up the paper a hundred times or something like that and stomp on it <laughs> because I wasn't happy about the line or something like that. It can happen with twisters too, but with these smaller ones, and it's not all going to be where I've pre-made the, 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 the base pattern because I haven't pre-made them all. I, have only, I haven't even got paper for all of them yet. But, you know, I'm just going to take them in the order I have them and do them little by little. You have a glass dip pen. How do you feel like working with it, Rose? Is it nice? Yeah, exactly. It's easier to take with you. And, and if it's smaller drawings, then it's also a good thing to have with you if you're going to be waiting somewhere or, or you know, be in the transportation or something like that. And then just, you know, say, okay, well, I, I will limit my color palette very much and, and just work from what I can have in my bag and just have fun with that. And I'm thinking if it's going to be like a little positivity mantra book, it doesn't have to be all that complicated and big and I think it would be nice you see here I'm gonna go backtracking this is gonna you know like uh, go with the green and out just to make sure that I get some green in there uh, because I'm not gonna get that much up here because I have to go through a lot of colors so that's kind of why I've kept this one um, so this one what is it called sky blue so let's see what is the sky blue like oh this is a nice one I like this one it's a beautiful color. Yeah, I like it. I'm liking it. And the one for tomorrow. Oh my God, the, the weirdie for tomorrow. That is such a funky one. It is really funky. We're going to have fun with that one, for sure. That is going to be fun too. I mean, I love this one too. I, I like the way he's like turning out so different than the first one I made. It's just really awesome to see, you know. And I love seeing all yours because it's a, it's a great inspiration. And it's just so awesome to see that you, you worked on them and enjoyed them and, and gave them your love and your own twist and saw them in your own way. I like that a lot. It's a great interaction. It's a great exchange um, between us, I think. And that's also why I like to spend extra time to try to make those recap videos where we can enjoy each other's work and 
and progress uh, because I think it's a nice, also encouraging feeling to see that you have your stuff featured. Um, and of course, I can only like put the stuff in that I, I see. So if you're sitting there thinking, oh, but I also call it this one and I'm not in the video, then hit it up as a comment on the album, on the, on the color where your day there, you can actually hit it up straight in the album. Takes a bit of practice and I can't hit them up for you right now. Um, or you can post them on my art page where you are now and then I'll grab them and I'll put them in there or post them in a comment on the on the album on my art page and I will grab them and I'll put them in the album for you and I'll save them for the video and I'll of course put your name in it and if you don't want your name in it you'll have to tell me um, because I do believe in in giving recognition to the artist and when you are coloring mine you are an artist you know working on the canvas I gave you so you know it becomes also your artwork that comes out um, so it's a collaborations collaboration between uh, artists when you are coloring so therefore I also do think that I need to have the names in there exactly <laughs> something positive for the work so Rose, do you like the glass dip pen? How how does it work for you? So which is this one? Pathalo. Oh, that's so difficult. P H T H. I mean, that's difficult to pronounce. Pathalo green. Pathalo blue. Yeah. Is it? Oh, this is a lovely blue. I like it. I like this blue. So we're really getting into trying these colors out, not being too critical about which order because I'm just using the order of the box. I think the blues probably need to be reordered um, and that's probably on me because since I don't use blues a lot then I probably didn't reorder them. Um, I probably didn't make a sequence that make sense to me because blues and greens I tend to forget. I like turquoise and, and lime greens more. So you we all have our little preferences and sometimes it can affect the way things turn out. But it's better than when I was just doing black and white and black and white. Exactly, yeah, the first time I colored it, I, I looked at it like a Spanish bull, like thinking about Spanish bullfighting or something like that. So it uh, turned out in the Spanish colors with the red, yellow and black. It was more, maybe more Catalan, um, because when I lived in Spain, I lived in Catalonia, in a small village close to Barcelona, a beautiful coastal village. Um, it's always been known as an artist town because they think it's got special light uh, that artists love. Uh, being an artist, I'm not an artist who work by light, yes, by fake light. Um, so for me, that special light really doesn't mean a thing because usually when I'm most active as an artist is in the nighttime and there's only artificial light there, so for me that doesn't really play a major role in my artwork and never has, but it does to some and uh, Dali and a lot of other very big artists were very happy with the cities and would come there and vacation there and it is a very much a city where uh, rich Spanish people have vacation houses or homes uh, it's a lovely, lovely little coastal town with beautiful beaches and and it's kind of also called the San Francisco of Europe because there is a, a big, huge gay community there 
which actually makes it very colorful. Uh, uh, and it has an international atmosphere in, in the size of like it's a small village, but it has like big international shops with clothes and stuff. Yeah, the ice blue is really awesome. Yeah. So yeah, it, it, it's, it's, it's a, a tiny village with a international uh, feel. Uh, and a beautiful place to be. It has changed over the years. I mean, it's not the same as when I lived there anymore. It's become more more children families also coming there, I think. So that has changed the vibe, the vibe a bit. But that was a perfect fit when I was there with Victoria. Uh, I do miss living there a lot uh, because it was my little village. Uh, I knew everyone in it and everyone knew me. I was the exotic, exotic woman. <laughs> that is so funny. You know, in Denmark, we think, when we think about exotic as a woman, or, or, but just as a person who's exotic, we think about people from Hawaii or, you know, some South American country or something like that. You know, we do not, exotic, it does not uh, include Scandinavian people <laughs> at all. But you know, they thought I was exotic. I remember there was one time I was in a gallery opening where I had like a few paintings. And then I read in the local newspaper about how I was this exotic, um, colorful personality. <laughs> you know, I was like, what the fuck? Exotic me? I'm, not, I'm just like a Viking, for Christ's sake. I'm not exotic at all. Exotic. In Denmark, when you say exotic, you're thinking long, mysterious, black hair and beautiful Hawaii flowers and stuff like that. You know, you don't think about like a big blonde woman. Uh, yeah, so, but uh, it was really nice. And I stole the show because I only had like two pieces there. I was not the main artist. They were just hanging there. But because I was so exotic and exciting... Uh, the whole article of this gallery opening, poor guy there, the artist that had the, that was the featured artist. Uh, I just stole the stole the show with my exoticness. <laughs> that was really funny. I had fun with that, and I, I yeah, as you can hear, I can still laugh about it because it was just so, it was so, uh, it was like a big joke, you know, when I read it and saw the article with the pictures, I was like thinking, this is like the joke of the year to call me exotic. Uh, any Danish person who, who had seen that would have been like laughing themselves. Uh, but uh, they took it very serious. It's definitely exotic. <laughs> yeah, right. But it was a, a lovely place to live and it's a lovely place to visit and I do recommend that people go visit there because it is a beautiful little, little village. And there's just beauty in everything. They wash the streets with soap every day. Like there's like little trucks, little washing trucks driving through. Everything is so clean there. Um, so if you're up early in the morning uh, walking, then there's the little soap truck washing all the streets uh, and it smells like soap everywhere uh, yeah i remember there was like uh, the first years i lived there there were no birds there were no uh, you know insects no nothing turned out that they had sprayed the whole place with the airplanes some years before and and that kind of made the, a lot of that the uh, insect and bird life disappear <laughs> since that's pain for you you know i mean they don't they, they they just do it and then they think afterwards after the fact so um yeah uh, but the birds have come back um uh, and the insects especially like if it's the end of the summer because there's a wine land all around uh then it's full of flies when the when the grapes are ripe and there's you can get like so much variety of uh, 
of grapes there that is unbelievable beautiful beautiful grapes and beautiful wines at reasonable prices yeah learning curve that's what I thought Rose that that would be a big learning curve with it I don't think that they are too exactly alike because they're supposed to be hand blown so they shouldn't be alike um, but definitely, yeah, I, 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 when I see them, I sort of fall in love a little bit. They're not that expensive. I'm just thinking, do I want to, you know, I don't know. Um, because it might just be another thing that would be lying around and I, I wouldn't get to use it. And then it's a silly, silly thing, you know. Uh, so, but I just think they're so beautiful. So that might might be worth it just for the what, what's called the decorative value of having it um, and definitely it would be fun to try them out this is going really well I think he's turning out pretty handsomely a lot of the weirdies I say he I don't know why but it's just a lot of them seem like a he but there are some that quite uh, that don't really seem like he so those like those are girlies um, and some of them, they're probably unknown what they are. Or they might not be one or the other, I'm not sure. They're just weirdies, so they can be defined any way, anyhow, that anyone wants to define them. Or undefined. I don't like defining too many things. I find it uh, not very useful in my everyday life having to define things. You know, I, I find it easier to just leave it undefined and then just take it as it as it comes. You see, it looks good from this way, but it also looks good from the other way. I mean, this is the way I drew it, but I, I think, yeah, it doesn't matter which way you turn a weirdy, as long as you see your focus point. Um, Oh, this must be the ice blue, isn't it? No, this is light cobalt turquoise. Oh my God, that's a long name. Light cobalt turquoise. Good thing that it has a number, and it has uh, three starts of light fastness, which is pretty good. Uh, so yeah, that means uh, that it will hold up well if you frame it and put it on the wall. But still, even though that it it has a good light fastness, you know, still this antique layer frame, the antique layer glass is a good idea because you want your artwork to hold up to the, to the to time and, and the sun and the light and everything so that it will last longer and, and make people smile longer. If you're going to frame it, if you're not going to frame it. If you're just going to have it in a folder or a file or inside the book, then it, it won't get hurt by the light as fast because the light won't come in and you'll just look at it when you open it and that, then that's a different thing. It will be protected more. But it will still fade, you know, if, it, if it's not really good materials, it will still fail. Uh, fade. Fade away. Mm -hmm. So yeah, this is pretty. But I like the way these he these uh, big, big brush feel in your hand. They're like nice and fat to hold on to. And uh, and you can put the the top on on here. I like that. You know, that's one thing that I really enjoy. It really bugs me when it can't be on there. Because I really, I just, this is like a pet thing about, I always had that, you know, I want, I like to be able to have it there because it also provides extra weight in the end. And uh, I like that stability that it provides when you have it there. Uh, that means something to me in my process and in my thought process. And you see, it's going to be fun with the green going out here. I think that that was a good decision. 
because you know in all these I'm not even making it to the green I will make it to the green here and here and here and might just make it up there so it's a good thing that we have that one that will go the other way just to provide that contrast so good thinking Maria uh, I probably even wasn't thinking that when I did it but I, I must have had some idea uh, there's always, you know, things pan out the way they're supposed to. So, yeah, that was a nice one, this one. Light cobalt turquoise. So now we're going to see what's the next one. There's quite a few greens before I hit that lime green. But that's good. So this one is called cobalt green. Cobalt green, that's nice. Looking forward to see what that one is like. Oh, this is a lovely one again. This could definitely go for peacock. Yeah. I do actually, if you like peacocks, then you should check out my uh, Imagine World books because I do have a couple of peacocks in there that I drew. They are the only books where I have drawn something that is more like natural looking, that like, you know, um, they, they are not easy, they're complicated, extremely complicated, even for me to color. Um, even for me, I say I'm not really a great colorist. But you know, even that I created them, I still find them quite uh, challenging to color. Uh, also because I don't really like to color people. Um, that's why my people usually end up with a purple skin or turquoise or blue skin or something like that and then they're just aliens because uh, I really hate the skin tone colors uh, so so I'll just uh, I'll just uh, you know find a way to work around it but that's the way it is we all have our preferences and I've really seen some of these uh, from Imagine World colored so beautifully as a really 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 beautiful I mean I love the drawings I done I mean, I love the whole process of making them, um, of, of being imaginative and putting animals' heads on people and stuff like that, you know, and people's heads on animals and mixing it up. And there's a lot of animals in there, wild animals. There's also key cats and puppies and ballet dancers and statues and this all kind of really, it's, it's called Imagine World. And uh, so, that is, uh, they're, they're really, I mean, I'm very proud of those books because um, it took me an awful long time to draw, but I also had a really great time exploring and drawing them. And I do hope that I will draw a lot more of those kinds of books in between. I mean, they will be long in between because it is a process that takes me very long. And I don't always feel in the mood, you know, you have to be in a, certain mood to have a certain inspiration in that moment to do it and then you're on a roll uh, but it's definitely not a guaranteed thing to get into that mood see here there's somebody who really fucked up light pathalo green because this is kind of color of the writing you just can't see it so that is somebody who effed up uh, in the department of the in the design department. Oh, this is a beautiful color. I love it. Really pretty color. So I would fire that person from the design design team who made the decision to have that light um, lettering on this on this particular pencil. That would be definitely that would be in the in the department of getting fired if you're working for me as a designer, as a product designer. I mean, that's like, like totally stupid. I've never seen anything as stupid as that. I actually think I mentioned this before when I was working on the, on the smaller ones. I think that's a very, very bad design decision because it should be easy and accessible for people to read the names and the numbers of the of the markers so that they can easily reference when they're doing their color charts and 
and everything, then it shouldn't be like that you're sitting there and having a huge problem seeing what the name of the pencil is. That's like ridiculous. Ridiculous. So, yeah, little things like that should not go in the positivity twisters. Little details like that that can annoy you <laughs> should not enter into any positivity twisters at all. So you see thereby this one he's banned. <laughs> he can't go in there. You see here you have perfect. You can read it. Whereas when you look at this, you know I have to try to see if I can find it again. Just finding it is do you see that? Whoever thought about putting something like that on that background? It's like stupid, 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 stupid. I hope that the product designer watches this and realizes how grave a mistake it is when that color is so pretty. <laughs> so yeah. It's all in the detail. That's why it sometimes takes me forever to make a cover. Because I want it to be a great cover. I, I, I like to work on the details of, of what I'm doing. The only detail I really suck at is the descriptions. I'm so bad at making good descriptions for my books. It's the most horrendous thing. I, I just can't write a good description for the books. I, it's just impossibility for me. I can write a good description for somebody else, but not for mine, not for my own. And it's really annoying because I know that a good description will help the book. So I probably have to find somebody who can help me write awesome, uh, inviting descriptions. Sometimes I have somebody else write a foreword or something, you know, somebody who has tried the drawings and, and worked with them. And, and Johanna Anz has done that for me a few times, and, and that helps a lot. Um, but it's so challenging to write your own description of your own work, because, especially when you're Danish, because you're sort of taught that you should never, like, give praise to yourself or anything. And... Um, and it's just really, really hard for me. I find it so hard to write a, a, a good description for my own stuff. For others I can, but for my own it's, a, it's really hard. I'll just write, there's 50 drawings inside. <laughs> you know, but then, you know, I'll make the videos where everybody can see everything inside. It's not like that I'm not trying to make an effort. I'm just, uh, there's one, two, three, four, five, six. Let me just see. Okay, that'll be fine. I think so. We'll get the greens in there. Uh, but that can be challenging to do that. Very challenging. I, I found out there's a lot of greens. There's like six left with this, with this one. Um, so that's nice. We'll get some green in there and we'll see the green range and it sort of fits with with leaving out the browns and the skins and the grays so um, it kind of pans out to fit really well with what I wanted for this one and we got to look at the big brush artist pit big brush ones we've already been through the the small brush ones and um, I like those they're really awesome, and I think they actually, you know, they're not as streaky at all as uh, as these ones. They're not as streaky, but I think it's because they let out less uh, less ink when with with the flow, and then that paper issue that I talked about before that plays in plays a part there. So uh, yeah, I'm just babbling now. So. Here we go. Here we go. Going for the next green. This is a darker green. This is called Chromium Green Opaque. Okay, that's a long name too. They do like their long names. 
but I think it's also because their names have been classical, yeah, since 1761 probably. You know, that's when they started the company. So they have some classic names and those you will see again in other sets. Um, So definitely nice color also. I would say that this is more like olive. But I do like the sound of chromium. And this one is waiting for the end. Because this is the end. The glorious end. The end. This will be the finale uh, of this drawing. This is lovely. Yes. We're moving right up. And then we got something that looks like a curry. I don't know if he just got like, it's called green gold. And he looks totally out of the place with the others. And I do have a feeling to let go of him. Uh, I'm just going to try him on my hand a little bit. No. I think, you know, he has to go. He doesn't belong in the sequence that we're using here. So I'm. He's gonna go because he doesn't fit. He fits more with the browns. Uh, I think it's a fluke that he was sitting right there. So, so he's left the building. Yes, they do because they're using the same pigment. So there's some base pigments and uh, this chromium and you know there's a lot of different names that you will see cadmium and. Uh, all these shoes are the same names. They just have different, uh, yeah, you will see those names repeated also in other sets. I mean, there are a lot of color names that are, you know, sort of given. You know, you always have to have a cadmium red or uh, geranium or, or this chromium or cobalt. And, there's a lot of those things that will go again and again uh, in both the, the same brand names. Of course, it's more mainly if it's the same brand, they will have a lot of the same names, and then they will maybe you know have more names in one set because there's more colors in that set and and less in another. But but it will be the same ones, and uh, and you will see that repeated in other brands as well. And they might have picked up the names from others, so. You know, there are like, you know, there's standard color schemes and stuff uh, where everything is named. And a lot of the names will come from there, unless they're like being a very funky company and just making up their own names for everything. Uh, which there are some people who do. Uh, but in a way, you know, it's nice that there is a, a standard names for a lot of the things. And then you can sort of, you know, they can play a bit around with the standard name, but if they got that standard name in somebody who studied color theory will at least have a clue about where they are in the in the in the color <laughs> i started color theory when i was in art school it was very boring no i actually enjoyed it i, I enjoyed making the charts and i still enjoy making the charts and it's is one of the yeah it's the first thing i do when i have a new set of colors is to make a chart and i, I made even the books for it um, because I was never happy with others, the templates of others, so I made my own templates and I also made books that, and sets that you guys can get. Uh, but it doesn't matter if it's my template or somebody else's or one that you draw up yourself that fits you perfectly. Uh, but it's a very good idea to always do. And it doesn't matter if it's a cheap or an expensive set, because, you know, if you're going to be working with the colors, it's nice to first of all, know them and have handled them before you're on the drawing and to know what the true color is because often you will find that the true color is not what's on the outside and if you just look at their color chart, the digital one, it will depend on your screen which color shows. So you have no guarantee of it being the true color that you will experience. And the third point that is important is that that color will also look different on different paper. 
So there's a lot to take into consideration. So if, for instance, you always buy books on Amazon, then it will make really sense to make your color tests in, for instance, the color companion or any other companion for, for testing uh, that is on the same paper so that you can see how your colors look on that paper and see and feel how your uh, material works on that paper. But if you like to print at home, it would be advisable that you print it on the paper that you like to color with it on and test it on that, you know, make your test there. So just to sort of, you know, that's a, that's a good uh, way of, of knowing uh, your material better. You see, now we've come to this. This is the light green. This is what I would call lime green, but yeah. In some sets, they're called lime green. In others, they're called uh, yellow green. And in this one, it's called light green. And I really like this color a lot. Uh, so now we're actually ready to backtrack down here because this is the last, last one here because I took out that other green. Uh, so it goes in here and then we're just going to backtrack uh, to spread this one out and then we'll finish down here uh, afterwards with the, with the yellows uh, because I think that that will... No, I'll, I'll finish with the yellows and then we'll backtrack. Um, why? Because I want this to be the finishing section. That's why. <laughs> I got a plan. So this would then, I would go for the ivory now, which was the lightest, lightest, not even really a yellow. So I'm going to pop him in there. It's a very light color um, that I might normally not have put in here, but since I started with him, he's going to get in there again. Uh, and these you can definitely also mix up. Um, only with each other, don't mix it with other brands um, because that might really disturb the, 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 the formula of what's inside. So don't do that. You don't want to ruin your pencil or your marker. So, you know, when you, for instance, do like, you know, the tip to tip method, you want to keep it in the brand. So, because they all have different resolutions on the formulas. So you don't want to mess up what you're working with or ruin them. But if you do it within the same brand, then you should be safe. And never uh, do it water markers and alcohol markers because then you'll break your water markers uh, because of the alcohol. So that would be bad. I really do think that this one should have been more like something else or it's messed up and then we have this warm yellow coming on now I really like And there's this one that was going in between the orange and the yellow. It's going to come up here. This is it's going to finish it off nicely. So just have those tips where it's slightly repeated. Just a little bit of the feeling of the inside because we've got a lot of it on the inside. So I think it's working out really well without having been planned out. Um, so it's going to be choop choop. That's nice. And then down here we'll have the little darker one on the tip. And uh, then we'll have that spread in there. It will diversify and contrast. Yes. So do remember to check out those uh, videos I made of the weekly progress. And now we're ready to backtrack. So that went very smooth, very smooth indeed, and he's looking good. 
looking happy now. I like it. I think even the eyes are standing out nicely. So yeah, this little little tiny beady eyes he's got there. There's a little beady eye one. So yeah, it's going on. This is a lovely green. And yeah, I just needed to do one thing in here, and that was this one. So yeah, missed him. Missed the spot. It's the next green. Yeah, this is, is going to be lovely. It's going to be a great result. Um, still that fond of the streakiness. So. And this is our eight, day eight of a weird year day. It is, we got, we are in it for the long haul. I am in it for the long haul because uh, I got 366 of those. So, I mean, there's no 29th of uh, February this year. So I don't know if we're just going to have a double session on the 28th because, you know, we shouldn't leave out the ones who have a birthday on the 29th. We'll have to do a leap thing there. I mean, that would only be reasonable and fair. And we're going for this greeny, greeny, greeny. And what is nice about the weirdies is that they are pretty simple and straightforward to color. I mean, you can really, you know, like just enjoy the colors and, and disconnect. Uh, and then they're funny, so you can sit and make up some funny story about the weirdie you're working on and just uh, play around with it. There's no real, uh, you know, it's not that difficult, except for small spaces, but that's always a challenge, isn't it? So, let's see. Uh, it didn't go right in between those greens. It would have been all right if I had taken it further from the greens and into the browns and then been between the greens and the browns or between yellows and browns or oranges and browns. Uh, but, but in this uh, sequence of the greens, I don't think it would have fitted in that uh, um, green gold. The green gold sounds really good to me. I want some green gold. And some red gold. Yeah, it's going to be a colorful one. I do like when they're really colorful and happy. I think uh, I think it gives the extra dimension to a piece. That you know, it's happiness. But you can color it so many ways. And when I see all the colors of everybody else. You know, there's so much inspiration and so much creativity in the color palettes used. And it's just awesome to see how different they can look with a different take on them. And that's uh, an inspiration in itself. Um, so do check out the colored album and do check out the video I made to recap our very first week of Color A Weirdy A Day. And remember to get your weirdy for tomorrow. And I will be, when I'm finished with this, I will be hitting up. Well, that will probably be after I draw the live twister. Um, then I will hit up the, the weirdy of the 10th on the pay hip. And I have decided that this month, and I don't know if that will continue, uh, that I will keep every weirdy of this month up for the whole month um, just so that you know newcomers can have a chance to get them after the month is over I'll take them down and then we'll start on February so that we don't have all of it lying out there uh, it will take up too much space in the pay hip and, and then it will be difficult for people to find anything in there because it's not that easy to I mean if you go in straight on my pay hip then you'll see their pages and and pages of products because there's like 80 something products now in there uh, some are posters from, from way before there's even like a mandala collection uh, that is like the first thing I made um, for coloring 
uh, that one has never been published in a book. It's just a small collection. Um, so um, that is in there, and then there's some poster, big posters of some of some scans of my really huge drawings, and uh, then there's books, and I'm trying to update the books and put more and more books up there. Uh, but you know, I don't always have time to do everything. So the most complete collection of my books, of course, is is the collection that is on on uh, Amazon. And the only two that are not on Amazon right now are in Matthew World 2, that is only on my Etsy account, uh, with the 23 uh, in Matthew World drawings. That one is only available there so far, and I don't know when it will be available anywhere else. Uh, and then the Big Book of Spheres is right now only on the pay hip. Uh, but it will be coming to uh, Amazon soon, so you will be able to get it there. Uh, I'm not putting a lot up on the Etsy, and I'm not updating it a lot, because I do prefer to use the pay hit. I just have to give my dad a couple of cigarettes, so... Yeah. So yeah, so I, I, I try to, because I have more space uh, for the individual files on the pay hip. And I don't have to pay a listing fee for each listing every time. So th that means that pay hip doesn't take as much from me as, uh, as Etsy does. And Etsy doesn't have room for my big books. My books are simply too large for Etsy. Um, and I don't want to compromise my file quality and make them lower quality in order to fit them in there uh, because that would mean that you then can't print them bigger and I really do like that you are able to print A3 if you want to because I think it will help for those who might not you know have the greatest relationship with the tiny lines and the tiny spaces then it's a good thing to be able to print it in this size that I have here uh, because you will feel more relaxed working with it and I think it's also a piece that you can easier frame or use as a present when you when you have done that and I mean if you make a passport two, you can sort of cut out the, the writing on them if you've gotten them on the, on the account and of course yeah I also these weirdies that are downloadable for, for weirdy a day they are set at zero, uh, and that's because I want them to be accessible to everyone. But you can tip me, which will help support my endeavors in the, into arts and being able to keep creating, um, because, yeah, I'm an artist, so uh, I need to eat, <laughs> too, and pay bills and stuff. And uh, so a tip, if you can. Uh, if you can't afford it, then please. Don't over, you know, I know what it feels like when you can't. And that, that's the reason why I put it, that everybody can participate. Uh, you know, well, you still have to print and have your own colors, but there's a reasoning behind what I do, and that is because I want it to be accessible. I prefer PayHip. I like it a lot more. And, I mean, it can be confusing when you look at the overview that there's some things that don't have pictures on it. And you know what? That is because... It actually has a preview video, so if you click on that book, you'll be able to see the video with all the pages on the purchase page, which I think is pretty awesome. So the ones that have pictures is because there's no video up. Uh, and the other ones, if they don't have a picture, then if you click on it, then you will be able to see the look through, the preview of the book, which I think is worth, worth 100 pictures to be able to see all the pages inside the book. So that's another feature that I really like um, about PayHip, that I can put it like that. Because I think the most important thing for anyone who wants to buy a book is to see the drawings inside. Because that way you can make a decision if it is for you, if it's something that you really want to do. You know, because, you know, a book might look great, the cover might be beautiful and awesome and it might entice you and seduce you and make you all happy and 
and you feel like, whoa, this is the book for me. But, you know, uh, take your time and, and have a look at the video of all the pages inside and then think, is it really for me? You know, because it's annoying to buy a product and then afterwards find out, oh, but I only wanted to, to like color two in it or something like that. Then it's better that you've seen it uh, and you can relate to, is it for me or not? So here we go. And uh, that concludes our weirdy of the 8th of January, our Color Weirdia Day session number 8. And uh, as I said before, I'll be back to draw this one, to, to draw this one live with you guys. So in about uh, two, three minutes, I'll probably be back. I just have to make the description and then I'll get straight into it. Uh, I, I have been in some compilations, but uh, if you just uh, on Amazon uh, put my name, then you'll find it, Maria Vittle or Global Doodle Gems, Maria Vittle, and you'll find lots. Uh, there's also a lot of Global Doodle Gems books that are with a lot more artists in it, and a lot of uh, individual ones. Um, I have about 80 individual ones that I made myself. So if you write Maria Vittle, you will find a lot with my name. So there are lots, lots. And if you just look at the photo album on my page here, the one that has uh, my, my books inside it, it has about 80 uh, pictures inside of all the covers. And there are direct links to Amazon of each book there. So I'm going to sign off here, and then I'm going to be right back to do a live drawing. And that will be fun. So see you in a bit. Bye-bye. Thank you, Kat, and thank you, Patricia, and I'll see you in a bit.